In this podcast episode, I have an interview with Emer Shannon. Emer Shannon is known as Miss Mortgages on Instagram. She has a very, very large following there. I was always intrigued as to why anybody would use a mortgage broker and not go directly to the bank. So I've asked her a large, wide range of questions about mortgages and getting a mortgage and the services that a mortgage broker does and so on. So I think you'll find it useful, especially if you're in the market for buying a house or getting a mortgage in uh, in the near future. Hey, it's Terry Gorry, and this is the Terry Gorry Podcast. So we're recording there now. Okay, Emer, you might just tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you got into this mortgage racket. Perfect. Um, my name's Emer Shannon, um, and I suppose I initially started out in AIB, um, and I was on the mortgage team there as well for two years. Um, and then I moved to KBC, um, and I was a mortgage advisor there as well. Um, but I moved through to the broker support team, um, and that's, I suppose, where I got involved in the broker side of things and decided to make the move over to be an actual broker um, and yeah there we are in terms of I suppose my Instagram page that came about with the um, with the I suppose the pandemic and I suppose you know I suppose just something to do I suppose as well and um, you, and know, you have a huge you have a huge following on Instagram haven't you well, yeah, like much, much more than I ever expected. You know, I mm. never expected it to have like money at all. You know, so it's great. Many, yeah. many, many fans or followers have you now on Instagram. I think there's maybe the twenty one thousand. I think so. Yeah. Um, That's pretty good, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's much more than I ever, I ever expected. So it is great. Yeah. yeah. Just in relation then to using a, a mortgage broker, Emer, why would anybody use a mortgage broker at all? That's one of the first questions that might pop into somebody's head. Why not yeah. go off to the bank themselves? Obviously, there's work involved, etc. Yeah, no, 100%. I suppose the main thing, I suppose, you know, for me, and it's like that it is a very common question. People always say it all the time, ask it all the time. Um, I suppose it, it's really, you know, I suppose to get a whole of market view. You know, if you walk into one of the main banks, you know, in Ireland, you're on, they're only going to discuss their products and what they have an offer. And also, if you don't, for example, if you've gotten, uh, just for example, a, n- a non-straightforward case or a non-standard case, and you don't for some reason qualify for it with them, they're not going to say to you, well, you might qualify down the road, mm. or, you know, you might actually qualify in, in the other side for more with another lender. They're not going to do that. They're just going to tell you what you qualify for there. Yeah. Um, so we're going into a broker, and especially one that has um, an agency with all of the lenders, you're getting a whole market view. They're going to compare and contrast, and they'll tell you what you qualify for with here and what you don't qualify for there, yeah. and so on and so forth. So I suppose it's like a one-stop shop for all, really. Yeah, that's um, something I know. never would have thought of myself, that the fact that uh, a person might be uh, eligible in one uh, financial institution mightn't be eligible somewhere else. And obviously... There's no great yeah. incentive for a Bank of Ireland person to tell you to go to KBC or whatever, you know? Exactly. They just don't. And to be honest, the problem is, they, they, not the problem, but they're obviously not trained on other um, credit lending, I suppose, lending criteria and all of that from other lenders. They can't. They probably just don't know either. But I had that. I had someone come to me and, you know, they didn't qualify in some bank they went yeah. directly to and they're really upset really downtrodden and it was actually to do with them at the time disability allowance because yeah. the lender didn't take it into account but at the time Ulster Bank did take that into account so like right. they you know they weren't advised of that and they could yeah. actually you know apply at the time then through Ulster Bank yeah um so and to be honest I was really upset for them because they were they said they just went out and they were really upset about the whole thing and they weren't kind of given any kind of hope or something. Yeah so that was just one example but the majority would really be you could either get a better interest rate, a higher loan, or, you know, like that also mortgage protection. That's one thing people don't look at. Yeah. All of the main lenders, as you said, they're Bank of Ireland, they're tied to New Ireland, AIB, they're Irish Life. They're only going to discuss those mortgage policies, whereas like ourselves, I suppose, at NFP, yeah. you know, we have an agency with all of the um, all of the life um, companies in Ireland, too. So we'll discuss all them, too. And would there be much difference just in terms of the rates for life insurance across? Yeah. Because, like, for example, if you look at the main ones in Ireland, they, they don't really have to compete because they're getting fed from the lenders. Yeah. I don't mean they don't have to, but I suppose they would be more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so if you look at the likes of, say, the, like, you know, for example, Royal London would be one that's quite good. Value, yeah. Or even Aviva, you know, and obviously they're all great policies. 
and it depends what you want and what's specific to you and it could well be the best one but it's mm. about getting that whole market view I suppose and yeah. these days especially youngsters or younger people they kind of want the cheapest one yeah. not really now they should probably be thinking of the, the level of protection but sometimes you can still get the same level of protection for cheap for the same for cheaper sorry yeah yeah just in terms of fees then Emer, how, how do our fees calculated or how does that work <laughs> Fees for using a broker, is it? No fees for the likes of the, the broker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. In arranging, in arranging the finance. Yeah. So I suppose all brokers, and that's why I suppose, um, you know, they're they're, they're non biased to one lender. They're all paid the same amount from every lender, so they're all given commission at one percent of the mortgage amount. So obviously, if it's two hundred thousand, they're going to get the two thousand there, um, the brokerage. Is the commission um, so the same across across the lenders? Yeah, all the same. So there's no kind of incentive. There's no incentive to go to one, to go to one or the other. Exactly. So it's one percent across the board. Um, now, obviously, then as well, some brokers do charge fees as well as that, and um, others don't. And I suppose the reasoning behind that, I suppose, is you know a lot of times people might go ahead or they might still go direct to the bank, and I suppose just to cover the, the work that they're doing. As yeah, well, well, time so. time is money, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I suppose that's one thing I suppose I kind of never learned until I kind of moved yeah. in to being a broker because you could put so much work into something and then if they don't go ahead, yeah. you know, you're not actually getting paid for the work you've done. So I suppose it's about respecting your own time as well. You have to, um, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's easy, exactly. easy being a busy fool, you know. Or, or you Yeah, that's a very good so saying. I love that saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just in terms then of the range of lenders that uh, any broker will act for, how did they pick and choose or who do you, I mean, do you have a wide range of lenders or finance providers? Yeah, so we have agencies with all of the eight Irish, I suppose, lenders to so, so say. So, for example, obviously, you've got like AIB and EBS, but like I suppose they're the same kind of in terms of the umbrella. And then obviously Haven is the broker channel of AIB. So if we were submitting an application there, it would be Haven, it would be going through. We yeah. obviously have Bank of Ireland, Permanent TSB, and um, uh, oh God, I don't know where they're coming from. Permanent TSB, Ulster Bank still, but there's no applications really being accepted by Ulster Bank anymore because they're going. And yeah. um, you have um, KBC as well. They are still accepting applications, but we do know that they're going to be, you know, I suppose migrating over to Bank of Ireland at some stage in the future. And then Finance Ireland, ICS as well. Um, and I, I hope I didn't leave any out there. I should have named eight. <laughs> and, and would most brokers uh, uh, provide fine or uh, arrange products across the range, or would they have? Would some brokers have their specific favourites or whatever? Yeah, so some actually don't have agencies with all of the the eight. Um, and I hope I did. I got. I probably didn't. I hope I named them all on it. But oh, eight, yeah, all eight, eight were, yeah. Uh, but uh, some don't. Some don't have agencies with all of them. So some. And we have Avant Money. That's what I didn't mention. Avant Money. So a lot yeah. of brokers don't because Avant, they only have a select panel of brokers that are on that one. So I knew I was forgetting something. Um, so a lot don't have, say, Avant. And then others, uh, um, some might only have agencies with three or four. So that means they can only advise those and they can only submit there. Now, they can obviously advise on other lenders. And, you know, if they're, you know, obviously they have to give the best financial advice as a broker. So I suppose if there was a better one, I'd like to think they probably were sending you there or, you know, yeah. facilitating it through another broker. Um, but the best way to do it is to make sure you're going through a broker that has an agency with all eight lenders. Yeah. And what sort of problems do you see typically occurring with borrowers? What's the most common uh, balls up to make? I suppose the most common, like, as you said, balls <laughs> that they can make would be not if they have a credit issue, because that can be a big one. The rest can be kind of, I suppose, rectified fairly quickly, you know, in terms of if you aren't doing your accounts right or saving, it's a case coming back in six months. Where if you have a credit issue and you haven't resolved that, you're, you know, you could be putting yourself off at least two years before you can mm. even look at applying. Yeah. So if you have any credit issues, even if you're not looking at applying for an, another little while, you're young or you, you've put it off, I'd say get a copy of your credit report and try to get that resolved now. Yeah. So that you do know when you do go to apply that um, that's kind it's of... It's not going to be a black mark against you or whatever. Exactly. And also if there is any, make sure you're always up front because if someone comes to me, I suppose, and I can, I can, I, I suppose, address it head on, it's not like we're kind of undisclosing it to the lenders so at least you're being up front, front about it and we can present it in a better way and yeah. there is obviously other options so I suppose the credit issue would be one of the main ones yeah um, and the other kind of simple ones that we can all avoid would be I suppose account management just you know not kind of gambling on your account for example and um, not missing like commitments in terms of direct debits and yeah. you know going into an unauthorized overdraft it's okay to dip in and out of one if you have one mm. but not to like live in it and go above that limit yeah. um, and little things like that I suppose would be the kind of main ones are you know not saving enough and that 
And it's just one piece of advice, then you tell somebody in order to get ready to apply or make an application, what would the one piece be? I suppose the main one would be like that reach out kind of early, like as then give yourself that six months just to make sure you're doing the right thing because there, like you can't reach out to realize, who the broker is it a broker I'd say yeah. a broker even a mortgage advisor someone that can know and guide you yeah. because you, you know it's hard you can't be you know, it's not nice being penalized for not doing something that you didn't know you should be doing yeah. so even if you get someone six months in advance just when you're getting ready they'll tell you for example I want to get 200,000 great well realistically you need to be saving at least a thousand a month for example or 800 a month we yeah. need to see that demonstrated through your rent or your savings and maybe leave the paddy power off the account for now or something like that you yeah. know, just so you know you're doing the right thing do you charge for consultations um, no, I, we don't charge for consultations. Um, you know, depending on the circumstances, there might be a fee for uh, processing the application with NFP. But um, as a rule, I suppose I don't charge for even facilitating the application. But there are cases that we we, we, we do charge a fee um, and like that a, lot of, a lot of brokers do. But for a consultation, initial one, no. You mentioned NFP. That's the company you work for, Eamor. Is that correct? Yeah. So I work I'll get your NFP. details later on then and we'll stick them under the video on YouTube or whatever, but we'll get your details. Don't let me go before before <laughs> the end though without getting your details, how people can Brilliant. contact you, you know. Great, now, there's, a, there's a few uh, questions there uh, on my YouTube channel. I'll run them by you. Like some of them are fairly obscure. Some of them are fairly uh, specific, etc. But you, you'd probably be able to give some sort of a steer. Yeah. Just in terms of uh, self-employed criteria, buy to let, this chap, he wants to raise finance, including agricultural land as security. He wants to use equity and other properties to raise finance. What sort of things should he be looking for? Or what sort of criteria are going to be applied to a lad like him if he's self-employed? Probably the yeah. accounts, is it? Or Yeah, so I just in terms of when he means raise equity, does he mean for the deposit, do you think, there? Um, yeah, well, raise well, obviously he wants to raise funds to buy, I'd say, more buy-to-let properties or, or some sort of investment properties. Yeah, perfect. Because just the only reason sometimes there can be a bit of confusion around it. Like, so the loan amount can only be, it would be only be dictated by the earned income. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter about how many, much assets or anything like that, assets that there is there by the earned income. So for self-employed, what we'll go off is your last two to three years, depending on the lender. If it's, if it's AIB or Haven, it's a three year average. The rest are mainly a two year average yeah. of your, say, your tax return. So your, the income you've declared for the last two years, yeah. you take an average of that. It yeah. will dictate how much income we can factor in for you. Yeah. And then you're still falling under the same three and a half times income for max loan. Potentially you could get an exception if it was strong enough as well. So if you're too smart or too clever with your tax uh, management, just, as yeah. it were, you, you can come back to bite you if you go to look for money. Exactly. Now, obviously, depending on the case and depending on the lender, that's why I suppose it can be better as well to go through a broker, especially in, in cases like that. Um, some lenders might look at a case of, you know, what you could be drawing as well. Yeah. Um, but not all of them do. And the mainstream ones probably wouldn't It'd be based on your tax returns. But, you know, if it's strong enough, they might look at the profits and that as well. But not all of lenders will. As a rule, it's based on the, the income there and your chapter four and your form 11 that's factored in, say. Yeah. Uh, another chap asked me there on my YouTube channel, does more savings increase chances for mortgage approval? Let's say I have a half. Is it good to disclose that or to stick to the minimum that a bank requires? In other words, if a bank has a requirement for, say, uh, they're only going to give um, or they require that you have 10 percent or 15 percent, is it better to stick to that or to let them know that you oh. actually have 50 percent? Um, no, it's like, for example, you, you qualify for whatever loan you qualify for. If you decide you only want to put 10% in, but you have another 200,000 sitting in your bank account, that's your choice. Yeah. You're, you qualify for this. You've got the, you've shown you can afford to repay it and that's fine. Yeah. You're obviously, you know, just do, deciding to do that for your own reasons. You know, there, there must be a reason why if you're going to pay the interest on it. Do you know, so that's totally fine. Once you qualify for it and you have the minimum deposit, that's all you need. And um, you may as well, you know, show it like, because it does yeah. obviously strengthen the case that if there ever was an issue, you have that there. It shows you've built it up and all of that too so it does strengthen the case it won't yeah. increase the loan amount to qualify for but it is obviously strength that you have that built up there very good now Anthony Ralston asks is there any hope for a single person earning less than 40,000 a year only option seems to be to move away out uh, to the countryside everything decent in the cities is priced over 200k uh, so somebody maybe a single person earning less than 40 grand a year I mean they're going to be limited enough I suppose in what they can buy isn't that correct 
Yes, but what I would say, yeah, definitely, like, yeah, realistically, yeah, do you know, and that struggle between for, of so many, do you know, so it it is so common. Yeah. What I would say there is, if you're talking about, do you say two hundred thousand? Uh, um, yeah, everything decent in the cities is priced over two hundred k. Over two hundred thousand. So obviously, depending on what your level of deposit there as well, like what I would say for for the likes themselves there, the 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 um. The best option for getting the highest loan amount would probably be through Rebuilding Ireland because they could probably go up to the four and a half times for you. You mightn't be strong enough in terms of net disposable income and, and income there to qualify for an exception with a mainstream lender. You know, so if you were to go through Rebuilding Ireland, you could potentially be getting up there. We'll say your, your income was 39,000. Four and a half times that is 175,500. So mm. I would be saying definitely instead of just looking around the lenders, the banks definitely look at approaching the local authority and see what you qualify for there. It can be a bit of a lengthier process, I'm told, in terms of the time it takes. But if it gets you, the, you know, the house at the end of the day. Yeah. And what is, what is that rebuilding that. Ireland, uh, Emer? So I suppose it's a government, it's a government scheme. Um, I don't know like too much about it, I, you know, in well, terms it's, of it's administered through the local authority, is it? Exactly. So, for example, if you were to, I don't know what way it's fit, but say Fingal or like there's a couple of different ones in Dublin, but yeah. wherever you're buying is the local authority has to apply to. So if you were thinking in two different areas, you'd need to get the approval from the different areas. Yeah. And um, so it's always it's based from wherever you live. Um, but it is very good. It helps a lot of people I know that are single um, get off, get up, get onto the property ladder. And I think the minimum income is 55,000 for a sole person or in and around that. Yeah. You know, the max for a joint application is 75 anyway. So All right. you'd definitely be qualifying there. Now, Richard asks me, if you're separated or divorced, I want to buy another house and your former partner continues to live in the house which you shared before the separation or divorce and gave up all entitlements to that house. Are you classed as a first time buyer? I wouldn't think so. I'd say you're still a second time buyer, aren't you? Yeah, you're right. Because you've still bought a house before. Yeah. This is just finding that has never purchased a house. The only way that you won't be considered, that you will still be considered a first time buyer is if you were gifted or inherited a property that you never actually bought it. Yeah. In terms of like in the central bank's rules, because you're you've never actually purchased one. Yeah. And um, but the fact that you were there, you bought one before you, you wouldn't unfortunately. Now, you may qualify for an LTV exception. The only real benefit there for yourself would be. I mean, sorry, drawback is that you need a 20% deposit. You yeah. would probably qualify maybe for, for an LTV exception to get a 10% deposit, which would be the same. Yeah. So, you know, if you have a strong case there, you know, you know, you might qualify for that. And they're easier to get than the LTI exceptions. Yeah. Another chap there, Kieran Kennedy, says to me, I heard a rumor a mortgage lender, Moco, will be offering rates of 1.75% for less than 60% loan-to-value mortgages early in the new year. Did you hear on about that, Eamon? No. I'd be lying if I said I, I, I did know much about that now. Um, I suppose I, I'll probably hear it when, it when it comes out, but I, I haven't heard too much about that now. Um, yeah. I think and it'll be hard to beat the 1.95. And if you read the read the news today, the way they're talking about inflation, everything, it looks like interest rates might be up and on the way up. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to know but when they're talking about, you know, with the, the ECB and all of that. Like, who knows what way interest rates will go? Um, and, yeah. you know, so I, I don't know. Have you heard Eamon anything about Revolut entering the mortgage market in a couple of years, no? I heard, I, I did hear a bit about Revolut. It, I don't know how it would work. Um, yeah. Applying for your, everything online and all of that. But isn't, isn't, I don't know. that other crowd, what do they call them? Is Vantage Money something similar to that? Aren't they all online or something? They don't have a physical presence. Who's or, this now? Is it Vantage or what do they call them? Um, Avant, is it? Or Avant, yeah, yeah. No, Avant, like I suppose they're broker only at the moment, but... Um, you know, there would be like, you know, obviously you can call up and, and the, the support team and all of that. Um, but like that, there is, even if you look at the systems these days that everyone's using, it is all going online, I suppose, in terms of you can nearly do your full mortgage application online anyways, but there still is people there assessing them and, you know, that you can pick up the phone to. Like we've got obviously our relationship managers in Avant that we ring that, you know, yeah. we get in touch with and we're liaising with the credit team as well. So yeah. um, I don't know how it would work, but it would be interesting. Look, the more that come on, the better. Absolutely, yeah. The more competition, the better. For any of it. Yeah. Paula Donovan then says, I earn 50K Mortgage of 165,000, house fired at 350 to 400,000. Spouse not working outside the home, would like to purchase a house to renovate and resell. Is it possible to obtain a bridging loan to purchase property and get a top up on my home mortgage for the renovation part and then sell the property when renovated? When renovated, I suppose, um, just there on that, they, there's no bridging loans anymore. So they've been done away with. And, um, you know, I know they used to be a thing, and I think. 
people found them very handy, obviously, when you were moving homes or, you know, yeah. trading up and all of that. But they're not an option anymore, unfortunately. Um, in terms of, you know, um, qualifying for another loan, loan, I suppose it would depend. If you're going to structure it in that way, mm. you know, that you're looking basically, as I've heard this saying recently, it's not something I use, but house flip. Uh, you're just looking to buy it and make a profit there. I wouldn't say too many of the lenders were too keen on that now. Yeah. But I suppose the way I'd be, I'd be structuring it there is obviously, actually, if you need to do it up, it sounds like it's probably not going to be the best in the best condition. So it'll probably you know, be a I, commercial I, loan he really needs to, isn't it? Or come, you know, yeah. I mean? Exactly. Or like that, if you are looking to buy a buy to let, you would yeah. still need, you'd need like a 30% deposit there um, and all of that. And also on your income with supporting the, the family and the existing mortgage, and I don't know if there's any other lending, you know, you'd need to be buying it in a very good area to qualify there that's going to get a good yield, you know, rental income, and it's going to hold its value as well. So yeah. you probably could be restricted on where you buy. You might be able to buy down the um, the country or something like, you know, like it depends yeah. on the location. The Nikki then asks me, uh, I'm a first time buyer. My husband have permanent job. I'm doing part time. Is there any options for us to get a mortgage? Also, we have some savings. Yeah, no, 100 percent like that, I suppose. The three and a half, like if it's part time and permanent, that can be factored in. You're just going to get three and a half times the combined, you know, income. So it, it depends if that's enough for you. Uh, like that, depending on the level of it, then, you know, you, you could maybe look for an exception if there's one available or like that. If you're below that 75,000, maybe that Rebuilding Ireland might be an option as well. Yeah. Now, as I said, I know I mentioned we deal with all of the, the lenders. We don't, I don't obviously deal with Rebuilding Ireland. So that is something you would go directly for yourself. Yeah. Do you have another one there from Con Aaron? Started house with savings, half built. Can I get a small mortgage to finish it? Everything done to plans, planning and regulations and engineer. Um, but like, is it easy enough, uh, Eamor, to get a small mortgage to finish that? I wonder. I suppose it depends on the circumstances and what he considers to be a small mortgage. Exactly, and it also depends on like that. And you kind of, I see this come in a good bit, and it's something I have to address. But I want to do it a bit more, like in a full post or something, in terms of oh, should I start the self build and then apply? Like the best thing there and the most the smartest thing is to get your mortgage approval before you start because you know what you have to deal with and what you qualify for yeah. it is obviously messy to get involved in something that's already completed and you know there, yeah. there is a bit of that so there might be a, be um there might be a bit of uh, a bit more work involved there in terms of having to to show the money that's gone into it show costings and all of that and what you've already paid show evidence of that and yeah. um, but you you it, it it can be done obviously but like that your income will, it would be you'll be within your income requirements too so depending yeah. what level is needed and that too and also the work would need to be done to a specific standard that the bank is happy with up to date as well yeah um so finally Dan I've one there from a chap he has a house is owned outright what to do to get a mortgage on that property to buy another house to rent out long term rather than going the route of just applying for a buy to let mortgage. So is there anything else other than uh, the route of going for a buy to let mortgage or yeah, so his mortgage and his, his mortgage he wants would be on the primary residence, not on the buy to let house. Yeah. So his best option there, like just without obviously going, like we haven't got, I didn't go into too much with him, but would probably be through Finance Ireland because they will allow you to re, um, to release equity in your home to buy another home, but they're the only lender that will usually allow that you to do that for that reason. All right. He could release equity to buy his own home through Finance Ireland there. So like that, um, you know, obviously, and then the rent, the other one property would be the rental property, but he'd be releasing it up to the, up to say the, the 90% or whatever it might be, whatever he qualifies for with Finance Ireland on the primary dwelling rates. Um, but they, they're very good in terms of the reasons they will allow you to release equity. They're also very good with self-employed and they're very good for buy to lets They will actually like that if the property is self-financing as well, you have a better option, a chance of getting it there if you don't qualify for the loan, say, because the property is able to, to cover yeah. the, the yield and the rental income. So they're, they're very strong in, in that regard. So I would say they would be your best option. Um, but but I would say speak to a broker, get a full review and see what would be the best. But, but from initial just... You know, the quick little bit I slip but I heard there, yeah. they would probably be the best one for what you're looking for. Yeah, that's great. You've answered all our questions very <laughs> comprehensively, Emer. Thank you very much. Hopefully. <laughs> great. Not uh, at all. Thank you so much. What's what's the best way though for people to contact you then if they have any um if they want to contact you? Yeah, well, I suppose I don't I have I don't know if anyone if people have Instagram, so I've got an Instagram page. So that's obviously you know a good way to, to get in contact. Also, you know, there's my email or my phone number, whatever suits. Um, I think yeah. these days we're all very easily accessible. Uh, exactly. <laughs> once yeah. you know, to get it, probably too, 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 too much so at times, isn't yeah. it? 
<laughs> definitely like it was so many different modes of contact going on yeah um but yeah so i suppose whatever suits them we're fairly flexible that's great if you if you send on details to me or i stick them in the in the box underneath in in the uh, youtube video or whatever and people can contact you direct then if they want or go to your website yeah. or whatever yeah, no, that's absolutely brilliant. And thanks so much You're for having okay. me on, Terry. Really appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. Great great, great to have you on, Eamor. Thanks for your help. Yeah, not at all. Thanks very much. Cheers. Good stuff. <laughs> all right. And I'll share the video with you then when we get it done. I'll do a little ed- edit on it and I'll, I'll do an introduction to that. But uh, it, it's it's a yeah. good one, I hope. Uh, and I think people brilliant, will yeah. find it genuinely useful, you know, especially anybody yeah. looking for a mortgage. So good stuff. Yeah, 100%. And there were some great questions that came in there as well. They, were, um, they covered loads of different things. That was great. All right. <laughs> All right, Emer. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Terry. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening, and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss an episode.